<clears throat> okay, well, I was, I'm starting my pulse motor build, and uh, I went with the Tin Man's suggestion to take an old microwave transformer. I chopped the end off, like the Tin Man said, and uh, I got the got the primary coil out. It's not pretty nice coil. Might come in useful for something. So then I found a surprise down inside there between the primary and the secondary were these magnetic shunts about like eight, eight or ten laminates of transformer steel wrapped in paper between the primary and the secondary I don't I don't know what those are for because it seems like to me they would be uh, shorting out the magnetic field uh, so I got to figure that out do some tests. I got one of them out. Got to try to get the other one out here. The little guys are hard to get out of there. Got them shellacked in. So, went really. Ah, uh, here we go. Yeah, get the second one out. They're wrapped in paper, and then they're shellacked in there. So. Um, there's two shunts. I got, I got both shunts out. One's still wrapped in paper. So now I'm down to the uh, secondary coil, which is the high voltage coil, which is the one that Tin Man uh, suggested that we use on his window motor experiment that he did. So um, I was going to try to use. The coil sounded like a good idea. I was surprised how easy the transformer came apart. Uh, I, I didn't get it right exactly, cut in the right place, but the bottom fell right, just fell right off, just like a Tin Man said it would. So that was pretty cool. So uh, I'm gonna shut the movie off for a little bit while I try to get this coil out of here. So I finally got the coil out, and uh, and it took about an hour. It was really hard to get out of there. So I need an anti-shake camera. Anyway, 98 ohms with a full coil. I haven't split it yet like the Tin Man shows how to do. I'm getting ready to split it next. But uh, here you can see, see my coil resting on top of the core. I'm thinking about using the core to uh, shape the magnetic field. I've noticed in all the Bedini circuits that uh, the bottom end of the coil is never used. It's just a wasted magnetic field. Uh, so I'm thinking about uh, utilizing the, the core from the high voltage transformer to capture the field in both directions. And uh, use the field generated across the gaps where the bottom plate of the transformer used to be so we'll see how that works out but uh, the coil fits in there nicely now with all the shellac and wrapper off of there and I got the ends stripped down and got a nice nice reading in 98 ohms it's really nice coil it's all wound nice and even by the machine and uh, I, I really like Tin Man's idea. Now if I could just quit shaking. <laughs> Later. So I tried to wire up some... Uh, try, I tried to use the uh, magnetic bearings. I wasn't getting anywhere. I made this little plastic jig and... I couldn't get it to turn good at all. And then I remembered I had that platter out of an old hard disk drive with the motor on it that turned pretty good. So I pop riveted that onto the bottom of my little plastic stand that I had made and, and um, put the coil on there out of the microwave as per Tin Man's instructions. Just put a couple magnets on the uh, on the edge of the disc so uh, 
buttons put those magnets on there Just a couple of ring magnets top and bottom and uh, the uh, the problem is they keep scooching out so like you heard it there it just slid out to where it's hitting the side over here so then it stops when that happens but anyway I couldn't believe it I wired it up according to Daft Man's circuit just a basic Bedini circuit gave it a spin it worked the very first time I, I was really really pleased with it so let me see if I can scooch these magnets back in here and give it a little spin see if it'll take off again yeah looks like it might be taking off so there you go my uh, first attempt at a pulse motor if you don't count the magnetic bearing failure and it worked the first time I just I just laid the coil on top of a couple of barbecue sticks I had so the coil is just, just resting on top of barbecue sticks so motors mounted to the bottom with three pop rivets and uh, according to the scope I measured it was like uh, roughly 17 to 16 to 17 rotations per second which is almost a thousand rpm so uh, that's, that's pretty cool the motor, the motor has a little winding in the bottom. I'm going to hook some wires up to it. See if I can get some free power out of the, out of the motor. Since I'm, since I'm turning it already anyway. But, uh, pretty cool. Have fun on, on the contest, everybody. Talk to you later. I got two batteries. Forgot to mention that. One one's charging one's running as per the normal circuit and I got a uh, old heat sink with a 2N3055 on it I scavenged out of an old power supply out of a milling machine I just wired up my stuff on top with the neon and everything the neon does light when I pull the pull the wire off the battery so I know I'm getting my pulse and uh, the one battery is definitely charging the other battery is running I put a 2 ohm resistor between the uh, two batteries so I can try to measure the milliamps and it looks like it's roughly drawing about I get 2 millivolts per milliamp so I was getting, I was getting about 26 millivolts so it should be about 13 milliamps so <clears throat> uh, perhaps that's perhaps that's what it's drawing 13 milliamps uh, it's pulsing though so I can't really get a good reading on it These are the trigger coil pulses. Just uh, two pulses per revolution. As you can see, there is uh, 33.3 uh, hertz divided by two times 60 is the RPM. It's almost exactly a thousand RPM. My magnets keep slipping off, so I tried. Putting a piece of yellow tape around the edge. I don't know if the tape will be strong enough to keep them from slipping off. <laughs> the centrifugal force just they just slide off. So it's going pretty good now. So I'll see if it uh, manages to throw them off. Of course, when they slide off, they hit the white white plastic end and comes to. Uh, quick stop 
as to be expected. <clears throat> this is uh, really an amazing circuit. Seems to be very efficient. It is charging my second battery. <clears throat> Even though it really doesn't need it, still, still voltage is still going up. <clears throat> Trying to figure out how to get a good measurement of how much current or energy actually is actually being used by the circuit <clears throat> in each pulse to keep the to keep the motor turning. I gotta try to figure out how to how to measure that. But this is really I just want to say a big shout out to Russ. Thanks for having the contest. I never would have got off my dead butt and built a pulse motor if it hadn't been for the contest. <clears throat> so I, I'm sure that was the idea is get people moving, get people doing something. So uh, thanks Russ, you got me moving. And uh, it's, it's really cool, I like it. So it's been running since about one o'clock this afternoon now, so about seven hours. I'm doing pretty good. So, got my microwave coil, my rotor, my two batteries, and my little heat sink with my transistor and stuff on it over there. So, gotta get a no shake camera. It's shaking is driving me crazy. So anyway, there's my little pulse motor running. Got a bunch of modifications I want to do to it. Let's start doing some actual research. Right. The Daft Man circuit, Bedini, Tin Man's microwave coil, A plus in my book.